Pastor, I kind of want my kids to, to choose for themselves what they think about Jesus, about the Bible, about Christianity, about church, uh, rather than me forcing anything on them. I, I hear that sentiment from time to time and, and honestly it comes from a really good place. It, it comes from a parent that, that wants what's best for the child and they want their child to want to go to church. They want their child to want to, to read the Bible or to learn about Jesus or to embrace Christianity. They want all those things for their child. They just they think the best way to do that is to, to leave it up to their child, to put it on their own timeline and let them choose. Uh, perhaps sometimes they're, they're reacting to how they grew up too. That, that parent who is parenting that way uh, maybe grew up the opposite way. Maybe they felt like Christianity was forced on them. They, they were made to do certain things, perhaps even in somewhat of a legalistic sort of way. And, and so they don't want that for their children because they don't want their, their children to resent church or resent God or Jesus uh, because their parents are making them do something. It's a, it's a noble thought, yet it's rooted in bad theology. Because uh, bad theology would say that, that children can make that decision for themselves, that they have it within themselves to do that. But good theology, what the Bible actually says, is that your child by nature is hostile to God. Your child by nature uh, can't choose what's right. Your child has a sinful nature. And so leaving that decision up to them is, is really not going to end well because they have a sinful nature that is fighting against what is right. On top of that, the devil really wants your child. And he, he is a roaring lion looking to devour. He's looking for his opportunities to shape and form your child, to put the, the, the influences in, in their life, to pull them away from, from the Bible, pull them away from church, pull them away from, from God. And he wants to form your child. So if your child is not being formed by God's Word and by what you teach them about God's Word, about Jesus, about church. If your child's not being formed in that way, then the devil's forming your child. The world is forming your child. And that formation is really important. You want to, to take an active role in your child's education about God's Word and how they grow in the Word. You want to be the one that's, that's facilitating this as you go. You don't want to just sit back and let them choose for themselves, and let them do it themselves. You want to be a part of that. But you can do it in a way that's not legalistic, that's not making someone do something. But you can communicate that, that this is something that you, you really love and that you want them to love this too. Sometimes that's better caught than taught. And here's what I mean. If your children see you in the Word, not just at church, but at home. If that's a regular part of your life and your kids see that, they're going to take note of that. They're going to catch some things from you. If they see you excited and happy to be at church, they're going to catch on to that. If they see you participating in the worship service, they're going to catch on to that. And that's going to have a greater impact than you might ever imagine. Not to mention, this is some of the most important work that you could do as a parent. Your number one evangelistic effort is your children. And you want them to know about Jesus, and, and Jesus wants them to know about him too. In the Gospels, Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. The disciples wanted to keep the kids away. This was just for the adults, but no, Jesus said, Let the little children come. When Jesus commanded baptism, he said, Baptize and teach them everything that I have commanded you. So, so once you baptize your, your child, your work isn't done. He, he wants you to teach. He wants your children to learn about him. He wants them to be formed by God's word. And you, as a parent, are, are a major part of that formation. God uses you to form, form your child and reach out to your child with the, the gospel your first evangelistic effort here. And then I want to read you here uh, Proverbs chapter 7 because I think this talks 
directly to what we're talking about here. He says, My son, guard what I say. Keep my commands with you. Obey my commands so that you may live. Protect my teachings like, a pup like the pupil of your eye. Tie them to your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding your relative. She will keep you safe from the immoral woman, from an unfaithful woman and her seductive words. Here, here the, the writer of this proverb is saying that there's, there's other teachings out there. There's other people that want to form your child. That's this, this unfaithful woman, these seductive words that want to pull your child away from the, the truth. But God is encouraging you uh, through this to, to teach your own child understanding. Teach them knowledge. To make this something that is a part of your everyday life that you tie to your fingers, that you write on the tablets of your heart. This is a part of your everyday day life. Because the, the message of Jesus Christ on the cross for the sins of the whole world and specifically the sin, your own sins, that, that's a life-changing message that you want your kids to know. So, so be a part of that process and, and bring those concerns that you have throughout that process to the Lord in prayer because He will hear them and He will help you through that. God bless you as, as you evangelize to your children and as you bring them up in the teaching of the Lord.